this is a very, uh, not interesting, but a very serious topic in a certain sense, because uh, the problem is, you know, when you're dealing with something, you need to know what you're dealing with. Uh, most people, they, they sort of, you know, busy with money, but they don't know what they're really busy with, you know, because money is such a universal concept and everyone is just busy with it. But what are you really busy with? You know, is it, um, it, it uh, uh, most people see it just as a medium with which you just buy something or it is the great secret, you know, if you have it, you, it's, you've got life and if you don't have it, you know, you're poor and, and yet at the end of the day, we miss the whole thing. If you want to conquer money, you need to know what you're dealing with. You need to know what's the different forms that money will come to you and how to deal with it. Remember, we've also said, and that's maybe good for a start, that the financial problem is not a money problem. The financial problem uh, uh, is, a, is a personal problem. And it's a personal problem in the sense that it is an identity problem. And, and this connects very well with money. Because money is 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 it's only is only something that the, that the describes it's a medium of exchange that depicts value, but the point is identity is also about value. And the moment that you 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 can't get grip to the, both of these values, you are sort of uh, disturbed in your own thinking, because the moment the the value of money is for you bigger than the value that you see in yourself. You will be you will be entangled in a process that you will suffer a lot to get out of it. You see, uh, uh, pe people see money as very very important, but they don't see themselves as very important. You can never conquer money and the value of money if you haven't conquered the value of yourself, knowing that all the money on the earth is not enough to buy one of us. That is that is the real uh, comparison. All the money and the riches or whatever you can call it on earth is not enough to buy one person on earth from the claws of death or sin or anything. That doesn't say money is now unimportant. No, it's still a measure of value because it was given by God for us to trade with and to trade things with. But we can't trade life with it because life is far bigger. It's another dimension and another paradigm. But the problem is that people look to money to give them some identity, to give them some value. You know, look at my house, look at my car, look at what uh, my salary, look at what, you know, look at all these things that I've bought with my money so that you can get an idea of, of who I am and how valuable I am. If you think that way, you're on the wrong way because money was never given to describe or, or to uh, de de define or to determine your value. Our value as human beings can only be determined by the price that was paid for us. And that is, we were bought by the precious blood of Christ. We were bought by the life of God himself. Therefore, only he and, the, and his son can give us a description of our own identity and our own value. But that does not make uh, money, uh, uh, what is it, uh, less of valuable in the sense, because we need money. Money is the is the is the language of this world. Money was given, as a, you know, that one song is "Money makes the world go around" or whatever. Money was really given by God as some form of value to 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 uh, exchange for things in this world, and that's not wrong. It will never stop. It is very good. The problem is that we don't discern the real value. Therefore, we end up with wrong problems. But never allow money to, to, to have a say in who you are. Never allow money to impress you more than what you are impressed with who you are. And, uh, because we are in another paradigm of value than what money is. We are in the paradigm of the spirit world and money is in the paradigm of the flesh world. It's a world that we, we need to deal with money. We need money. And I always say, you know, people always say, you know, if I need to choose between money and happiness, I will choose happiness above money. And that's a lie because money was given by God to make you happy. Go and live under the tree there in the street, you know, for one week without your bed, without your roof, without your toilet, without your stove, without your fridge. And we will see how happy you are. Money was given to make you happy. It's biblical. But money cannot satisfy you as a human being. We need God to satisfy us. 
money is uh, can, can make you happy, but the problem is you eat now. Three hours later, you you need you need to eat again. But satisfaction is something that 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 came through Christ, it makes us satisfied constantly in our spirit, and we can only get satisfied by knowing who we are in Christ Jesus. What what is really our true spirit identity? Okay. Just, uh, enough said of that. So money is the language of this world. It it um, it, it uh, compares with value. It's all about value, but it's which but but we needn't to uh, uh, confuse it with the value in the spirit world. Money, money, as we've been taught in this world, is a closed concept, meaning that it's just X amount of money. We need to get hold of it and distribute it amongst all people so that everyone can have enough. That is a lie. Money is not a closed concept. Money is something that can be produced. I mean, when when uh, the people came here in South Africa, there were no building or anything here. We, through the years, developed and built and create everything that's here. Because money is not a closed concept. It's produced by people. It is produced out of people, out of their identity. We'll, we'll come to that. So, so our government is very much working with the concept, you know, there's not, there's only enough, there's, we, you know, there's X amount of money and we must redistribute it. That concept is, it's basically communism, it's not working. We can create money, but we have different forms of this money and we need to look at these different forms and come to an understanding of how we can grow in all of this. You see, money is an outflow of and a result of prosperity, wisdom, integrity, initiative, ideas, character, self-discipline, management, and implementing of plans. That is what it is all about, is that money is an outflow of everything that's happening in your life. The initiatives and the disciplines and the integrity and everything that you have in your life, and you can produce money. You don't always need to earn money. We can produce it. We can even create money. You see, and we need to look at all these different concepts to come to a place where we understand uh, uh, where are we on this road in terms in terms of, of, of money. Uh, at the end of the day, we need to build a, a let's say a machine that gives us passive income where you where you stop working for money, but where money is working for you. But it is you don't start there. It is a process that you need to follow. To, uh, to eventually get there in your life. So it's also important just to mention, you know, that that um, that people always think that, you know, when I've made enough money and I've got my house and my car and this and that, you know, and X amount of money, I, I've been now successful in life. You see that the success is not determined by anything on the outside. Yes, it may be some sign of success that you've reached in the inside, but it is not the proof of success uh, in terms of in terms of what is it uh, success itself we need to get to a place where we understand that you are success success is a point that you have reached the day with your birth you cannot be more successful than the day of your birth because everything that you need to live to give utterance to and to create and to whatever was there at your birth you just didn't you just didn't know it you, you, you got to learn it along the way. You uh, um, get uh, uh, much more skilled in it, and then you started to manifest it. Yes, you know, at the age of 15, 16, you start to drive a car, but yet the potential of all of that was there from birth. Yes, you need to know it. You need to develop it. You need to get it into skills, and then you need to uh, use that skills to produce stuff in your life, books and cars and inventions and whatever. But everything comes from that potential that was there from, from day one at birth. So success is not determined by, by the end result of what you have produced. Success is determined by who you are. Your identity describes for us success. You were success the day of your birth. But you go through a process where you get to know these things, where you get to to uh, educate yourself in all of this, where you develop some uh, skills in it and, uh, and where you eventually produce some stuff. But 
success is not the point that you reach. It's not a certain thing that you reach. Yes, because of success in you, you've reached that point. Because of success, you could give utterance to something and uh, something got produced or manufactured or, or whatever it is. That yes, we, we, want, we want to come to. But it all comes out of you. You are the business. You are the success. You are the creative purpose of your own life. Everything is in you. Life is not a, a process of uh, outward to the inward. It's a process of the inward to the outward. It, everything starts with identity. Everything starts with who you are. I always say to people, the Bible is not a, 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 a what book, what must we do. It's a book of who, who you are. God wants to reveal to you your true identity. It's all about who you are. And specifically also your creative purpose. Not only who you are generally, but specifically what is given you, if sent you for on earth. Because the real life and the godly life is a life from the inside to the outside. I produce from the inside to the outside. I don't produce from the outside to the inside. Uh, that is the negative fleshly life that we need to uh, to avoid and not uh, get caught into. So, so uh, success is in you, but you need a journey and you need a process to get it out of your life and to get it manifested in, in the, full, the full sense of the word. Therefore, you need a lifestyle that will, that will enhance and grow and mature the success that's already in you. We as men, the greatest question that every man must answer himself on earth is, am I successful? This question will haunt every man till he get it answered. And the answer doesn't lie in the car and the house and everything. Yes, we need that. And that may be a sign of some success that you have found and developed. Yes, but the house is not the success. You are the success. But if we can start at a point of success and not work towards the point of success, it's much easier to live it. Because in the Bible, we are, according to God, they haven't put us in a process where we need to perform and achieve something. We, we start at fullness. We were birthed at fullness. We start with it and then we just give utterance to it. We just need to release what is in the inside. That is what it is all about. Um, we, we don't work towards the, 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 the success. We work from success. We don't work towards victory. We work from victory. That is a person that is inside of us. That is our own nature. Maybe I can just um, ask Jasper to throw us something there on the screen that we can see what is the difference then at the end of the day between money, riches, and wealth. That is a very, very important distinction that we need to talk about uh, nowadays okay let's see so remember it's all about money riches and wealth that's three different words for three different things very important most people have never thought about it this way they just heard it they think it's the same thing no it's not the same thing to start with we can say that that money it's got three dimensions if you can say it like that the first dimension is the money dimension that you can say relates very well to your body. You need to maybe study something and then you need to stand up in the morning and go and work for eight hours. You work for money. Then at the end of the month, you get a salary because you, 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 have, you sold your hours you know, to, the, to the company or wherever you work. And to all do all of this, you need a lot of discipline. Because you need to be on time at work, you know, you, at work you need to be disciplined and produce and not sit around and, and just let time pass. Uh, because there's, certain, uh, there's a certain vision there at the job, certain needs that, that you have that you must need yourself. You know, you must go home eventually at the end of the month and you must meet the needs. Most people that earn money are driven by the needs that's in them. And it's not wrong. Hear me clearly. It's just a lower level of riches. Everyone starts here. There's some needs. The, the, the food, the house, the, the petrol and everything and the car. It is, it's needs around us. And we start there. But we must learn not to work for the rest of our lives just to, to, uh, uh, to provide for the needs. Yes, it's all about provision when we start to work for money because we sell hours. That is what it is. 
And sometimes we want to sell more than eight hours. And sometimes you sell about everything you have. But the point is not to sell more hours. The point is, is to start to work more wisely that your hours can become more, uh, more valuable and that you can sell the same amount of eight hours, but you get more money because what you sell is uh, of more value than maybe what another person is doing uh, in his life. But, but by selling hours, you will, you, will, you will most probably never get wealthy. Uh, it's very it's very hard work to get wealthy by just selling hours. Uh, but remember, we I'm not de degrading this this first phase. It's important. We all start there. We need the lessons of earning money, work, salary, disciplines, to to stay true, to pay for all our needs, to get provision. But if, it, if it's all that there is in life, you get into consumerism because, you know, you work yourself unto wherever. And then, you know, Christmas, there is a, there is a, a double payment maybe, you know, and you just buy, buy, buy because you, it's consumerism. I sort of need to uh, treat myself, you know, because I've worked hard, you know. And, and yes, it's fine. You can't also treat yourself. But at the end of the day, they, they, they just, you know, produce some beautiful stuff for us and you never have enough money for all the, the beautiful things that there are on the market. So this is the first phase of us, you know, getting into lifestyle to work for money, work hard, salary, selling hours, discipline and all these things. But you need to get from this phase to the next phase and that is called riches. And that is called riches. The riches is when you take the money that you've earned and you make a plan with it. Uh, you know, say, say uh, maybe, maybe you've earned now a certain amount of money and then uh, uh, you've got some money left. So now you buy yourself, say, maybe a computer. You didn't have a, have a computer, so now you buy yourself a computer. Now you can maybe go on the internet and you can, in your spare time at home, you can, you can uh, sell some of your stuff, you know, uh, uh, or you can uh, produce something or you can uh, have a, do a certain service to someone else. So what riches is all about is that you take money, you buy yourself some assets that makes your life easier. Uh, instead of uh, cycling to work, you get yourself a scooter. So in that you, you score half an hour in the morning and half an hour in the afternoon and now you've got an extra hour that you can do something with and maybe selling that hour or do something yourself or growing some vegetables or you make plans and you sell some stuff you make plans uh, you raise the percentage of of what your time is worth if you can say it like that it is a it, it is a principle that you need to catch up with sort of you know that you 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 can enhance your value that you give to people, you can produce maybe something that is more valuable that people want to pay more for. Uh, uh, and, 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 and in this, in this sense, we, we start to, let's say, um, provide for the desires that's in us. Needs is essential stuff. Desires is something better, you know. I mean, you can go to, to work, say, maybe by, by bicycle or by... Uh, um, scooter but now you got a desire to buy a car and that's even more faster and you know i mean you've got the car at home over weekends and uh, there's some desires in you for for more things that is that uh, that makes your life just more and more easier you get yourself some internet and um, um, you 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 start to read uh, buy some books and read stuff and create some things and uh you, you start to, uh, uh, what is it, uh, share your life in a different way with people. It's because it's no longer out of just needs. There comes a, a sort of a fulfillment in it that, uh, that, that uh, I've reached something better because my life is much more enjoyable now. It's much more easier and, and all these things. Now, the negative sides of riches, the negative sides of money is consumerism, but the negative sides of riches is, is covetousness. You know, it's like it's like greed. Um, uh, because you now can buy more um, uh, stuff that's maybe, you know, shiny or whatever. You just can't stop because you just see now 
you buy more and more and more and more of the same and better of the same and so you go on and on and on because you 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 just you start to live for these things in life and listen clearly money the phase of money is not wrong the phase of riches is not wrong but why are the bible warning us so many times against riches and the rich man and all these problems what is the problem is god in against riches no god is not against riches the problem is the following and you will see that the problem is that people see riches as the end of the road the problem is that people see riches as the final definition of their lives because come and look at my house you know I buy a bigger house and a bigger house and more cars and a boat and all these things and there's nothing wrong with any of these assets but I start buying it out of out of a uh, plain greed and and it's more about more and more about defining myself and my identity and thinking that if I've I've reached the end goal of success and everything in life nothing of those things are wrong the process is not wrong it is the motivation and the understanding of that process that's wrong because you haven't arrived because you've got an house you haven't arrived because you've got a car or two cars or whatever that's only a means to an end the end is that you must live the life that's inside of you and most probably the life that's inside of you in terms of your creative purpose is something that you need to develop or give birth to that will make the life of other people better it's not about only making your own life better it's about making other people's lives better that's why there is a next phase where you need to go to and that is the wealth phase and i've seen so many people just stop at riches because they don't even know there is another phase after it namely the wealth creation phase remember you work for money you make plans for riches and you get all these beautiful things that is not wrong in itself but the things must not become your life the things must not become the definition the things must not become the end goal of your life and you settle down you know i've made it in life no you haven't made it in life god haven't uh, created you so that you can live a life me mine myself god is not against you having a let's say a decent computer and a decent car and a decent whatever you need to live your creative purpose but your creative purpose and what you need to produce to the people on the outside it's what you must uh, uh, reach unto and not uh, sit and just get more greedy and covetous and just and just adding more and more and more of the blinking stuff uh that's nothing wrong in itself but it's got no purpose in your life it just starts to bog you down you know now you have not only two cars you know you, you've got five cars and you've got an, a house at the sea and a house there and this year and this there and nothing of it is wrong it just are not part of the plan and therefore you need to understand your own identity you need to understand your creative purpose and you need to have the assets that will help you to live your creative purpose if you need to have maybe let's say three houses to live your creative purpose for what reason it might be i don't know it's it, it, you know it's all according to your plan you you can have it don't be intimidated by what is needed for your creative purpose but but make sure not to to get into assets and riches that is not part of your creative purpose and you're just accumulating a lot of stuff that's beautiful and uh, and and you just do it for the sake of you know uh, making yourself look very good in the eyes of other people so this is very important that you need to understand the the balance in the whole thing and the balance lies not in a certain principle in the first place the balance lies in the in the in the creative purpose that's upon your life because you can have what you need to live your creative purpose but just to have more and more and more of of the same thing is not at the end of the day the real goal of what it is all about we need to go to the the third phase and that is all about wealth creation wealth creation is is not where you 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 earn money through giving your body and work and do selling hours 
it's it's even more than using your soul, adding your soul to your your work, if you can say it like that. And you you start to create plans and uh, do things that people that that your body only on its own cannot do. You start to add your heart and your spirit to the whole thing, and that's where wealth creation is coming in. Um, wealth can be created. You see, the, the moment I heard this concept, it, you know, I, I, I'm in the Bible and the Bible is all about God and creation and God creating things, you know, and the moment I heard about wealth creation, it, it, it uh, uh, resonated with what, what I read in the Bible because God is a creator and he made us wealth creators. Now, there's a, there's a very good reason w- why we need to be very, what is it, um, uh, very joyful and, and very uh, serious about this concept of wealth creation. Because the concept of wealth, I want to give you some reasons why, uh, and explanations of what wealth is all about. Wealth is not only m- money or riches. Wealth is everything in your life. Y- yes, it's, it's about your money. It's about your hours. It's about what your assets, but it's all about your relationships, all of your relationships. It's about your time, where you're spending your time. It's about your health, your wealth and your health. Everything in your life is now part of wealth. You've got seven relationships in your life, namely God, yourself, marriage, uh, money, uh, uh, family, uh, friends, and, uh, and the world. It's seven relationships. And all of those seven relationships are part of wealth. Wealth is the overall total concept of everything in your life. Because we find out, and that's, uh, that's most often a problem with people that stop with riches, is that they work themselves all hours, morning to night for riches, and they lose their relationships. There's nothing wrong with riches. But if riches is the end of the road, you just want more riches and more riches and more riches, but you don't build relationship. Wealth, I've been talking to lots of wealth creators in my life, and I tell you, the interesting thing is when I've entered the house of a wealth creator, you know, in asking, I want to come to talk to you and have an interview with you, is that every one of, say, of them say to me one thing. If you come to talk to me about money, you can just as about leave. It's not that money is not important for me, but I do not live for money. I live for people. I live for making a contribution to this world. I'm just transplanting my heart into this world. Because it's no longer about work for money or making plans for money. It's about creating money. Now, that's another concept, people, because the, the, the way of creating money is inside you of me. We're all supposed to be wealth creators in this world and, and start to create money. Uh, uh, you know, I, I really could never see how could I really retire on a salary and, you know, uh, make a contribution and retire on that. You know, uh, there's only 10% people in South Africa that retire on more than 15,000 uh, 15, rand a month. There's only 1% people in South Africa that retire on more than 25,000 rand a month. Now, you can calculate for yourself where you are. And, and, and most people can't tell me and show me and prove to me what will they retire on. I could make the calculations and see that I cannot retire in making contributions only to a pension fund. I'm not against pension funds, but I saw that I need something that's far more faster and greater and got more potential, and that is creating money. I'm not against pension plans. Hear me clearly. That's not the issue. The issue is just that you cannot really retire on what you may be living now through a pension fund. That is the problem, and most people don't know it. So you need to, to, to get yourself to a place that you start to create money. You need to start to get to the place where you, where you multiply money. Uh, you're not working for a salary. You're not only saving somewhere along the road. You multiply money because, uh, because riches is all about investing money and get 8, 9, 12, 13, 15%, maybe 20%. That is what riches and saving is all about. But multiplication is 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. I remember meeting my first wealth creator a long time ago. And he told me, he said, the world is telling you 
that you know you get percentage but but you need to get must become a wealth creator where you start to multiply what you have he told me that he's not doing a deal if he do not do 100x 100x and, he, and I saw him doing a, a, a property deal in buying a property for 1.32 million, selling it eventually for 160 million. That's more than 100x. Because uh, you can take maybe the rest and say, okay, 132 is 100x, but the rest, okay, he needed a lot of money for infrastructure and all lots of things. But the point is he, he believed in multiplication. It was for me the most... Uh, I don't know what name to call it. You know, I've never heard about it. How do you multiply money? I told him, listen, help me to make one of those deals and I'm off your back. You know, he said, no, 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 you cannot multiply money because you, you don't even believe in it. You don't, you can't even tell me what is it. You need to study till you can see that you can multiply money. You need to get to work on fold, 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold. It took me three years to study the concept to get to the place where I think I can now make a deal of 30 fold and I did it and I could end up there and, and, and uh, um, let's say mature it until 100 fold. But the point is you when you get to this phase of wealth creation, you need to you need to sort of mingle your nature and your spirit and your whole being and your your character and your gifts and your talents and everything must start to mingle into a new dimension where, where, where you start to see that your money is just another form of worship in this world. Yes, it sounds strange because we need to worship God. Yes, but God has given you money to worship him. Show me your, your, your bank statements and I will show you where is your worship. Because you will spend your money where you think your value lies. You spend your money as a ways of as, uh, money is, a, is, a, is something that depicts value. You will spend your money on things that you think is valuable. Money and the way you're spending your money is therefore a way of worship from God. Show me where you spend your money and I will tell you what, you, what are you worshiping in your life. I don't need to know your life. Just show me your, 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 your bank statements. Because when you get to wealth creation, you get to abundance. You get to much more than I need in life. And you start to invest in society and you start to, your, 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 your issues is no longer how I'm going to pay you know, the money issue is how am I going to pay all my needs and my, my accounts? The richest problem is, you know, how can I afford just another car or a bigger car or a more whatever? But the, the issue in wealth creation is how can I spend all these, this money? How can I translate it into, into a, let's say, a community project where I enhance and grow and make people's lives a better place? That is what it what wealth creation is all about. I've I've never found a wealth creator that's living for money. Never, never. They make a lot of money, but they are not excited about money. Money is not for the end and passion. It's only a means to an end. But let's be clear: if you don't have the means, you can't reach the end. That's important. But it's never more than a means to an end. But they make a lot of money. But the end is what it is all about. What is the end? The end is your creative purpose, That we, why you are here. And you are not here for me, mine, myself. Yes, you may have enough for yourself. You are not here for survival. That's, I'm absolutely persuaded. No person needs to survive on earth. Life, life is not a game of, of survival. It's a game of life and abundance. Jesus came for life and abundance. But listen, it's more than life and abundance. What do, you, what do you do with the abundance? If you have found in the life, what do you do with the abundance? And if you, the, the wrong side of wealth is, is called mammon in the Bible. The Bible says you cannot serve God and mammon because mammon is a worship of money. It's when you reach a place where you will step on any person, you will do anything, you don't worry about anything. Uh, and let's say the wrong side of wealth is mammon, called mammon, where no value of any person doesn't mean anything to you. You will, you will step on people just for me, my, myself, and everything is for me. Uh, 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 at the end of the day, mammon is a spirit that takes hold of you. 
it's, it's, it's even bigger and more serious than greed. It's more serious than consumerism. It's a, it's a, it's a spirit uh, disease that, gr that grows out of the, the money problem in your life where you eventually get to this mammon and you've got mammon. Nothing, nothing is ever enough. You know, I always thought, you know, if, if all these people are stealing money in South Africa, you know, you get to 100 million, just leave the scene and go on with your life. No, no million is enough. One billion is not enough. Two billion is enough. They never stop. Never, never, never. If someone don't stop them, they never stop. Because it's a, it's a, it's a spirit greed that's in them called mammon. There is no stop to it. There is no end to it. No, they will murder any person to keep feeding it at the end of the day. It's a serious thing. It's very, very serious. So this is what wealth is all about. In Deuteronomy 8, verse 17 to 18 says, And say that you might not say in your heart, My power and the might of my hand has gotten me this wealth, this wealth. But you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you power to get wealth, to get wealth, not money, wealth, so that He may confirm His covenant, which He has sworn to your fathers at His ease today. It is God that will give you plans, ideas, and will guide you in the process of unfolding and getting to know yourself so that you can become a wealth creator. It is God that has given me the power to create this wealth. It is from God because God is a wealth creator in, in himself. And uh, uh, for, for most people that's believing in a sin gospel, that everything is about sin, 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 you know, uh, and money is not, you're not kosher with money, you know, you just need the, the bare essential to just pay, but you know, you, you must not get passionate about money. That is not a biblical concept. You know, uh, 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 the, 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 you know, the, even the bigger problem in our lives is that the money in your pocket at the moment is only currency. It's also not real money. It's only, it's only currency. You know, um, we can talk another day about real money. You know, it's actually something like gold and silver and all these things. But the government is selling us uh, uh, and giving us currency. That, and they're eating up 10% in terms of, uh, of um, uh, what they call it, uh, every year. Sorry, I've, I now lost the word. Every year, inflation. They, name it, they call it inflation, but it's just another word of stealing 10% of the value of your currency and leaving you with the same 100 rand currency, but it's just 10% less of value. They steal the value. They don't steal the currency. But at the end of the day, the Bible says in Philippians 4 verse 18, and I close down here, that, but I have all, I have abound, says Paul, I have been filled, having received from Epaphroditus the things which you sent, an odor of sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable and well-pleasing to God. Paul received money from people, and to him it was, uh, as and to God, it's a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable and well-pleasing to God. Whatever phase you are in at the moment, in terms of money, riches, or wealth, you must go from the beginning to the end. You can't start with health. You need to go through money, then riches, then wealth. But remember not to go into the wrong side of each of these phases. But also remember that each phase is from God. It is good. Just keep the wrong side of, uh, of selfishness out of it. To just feed yourself and your whole life is just circling around me, mine, myself. There's nothing, there's, there's, you are not evil. That's also true. You may have provision, but the end goal of why you are on earth is not for yourself. It is for other people. It is become a fountain of wealth where you produce every possible thing through your life and you become the fountain of it flowing into society and making life better for other people. That's all I want to say. Thank you very much.